Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for July 25th, 2022. Well, on Friday, we saw a little bit of profit taking coming in, just a little bit of uncertainty as we head into this big data week this week. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. And I have to tell you, we're going to have to be thinking pretty carefully about the data coming this week because we should expect some pretty substantial price volatility, overnight gaps, and um, maybe even some big intraday whipsaws as we wait for all of this data to roll out. It could be one of those challenging weeks of substantial price move in the market. And unfortunately, we just don't know which way it's going to go. Let's take a look at the diamonds here first. If we take a look at the Dow, pretty good, um, pretty good moves here in the market on the bullish side. Notice that we've broken that downtrend. We've broken through some resistance levels in the chart. And now what we're trying to do is we're trying to decide, can we hold these support levels in here? And that's going to be the big unknown this week as we really continue to hype up these earnings reports um, on big tech. There's an unbelievable amount of speculation going on in the market. And considering the risk of this market, I would just caution everyone to remember one of the major responsibilities of a trader is to protect that capital. It's a whole lot easier to make money if your account's still full of money than if you lose it all gambling around these big earnings reports. So be very, very careful here. Let's take a look at our technicals. Our technicals in the diamonds um, on a um, very bullish um, here. Again, we're up above our 50 day moving average. We need that proof that we can hold in here. Remember, a trend cannot begin. There is no trend until we um, cross out of the downtrend and then we make a higher low, prove a higher low, and then we see those buyers step up. That is the beginning of an upside trend. So let's watch for that and be careful. What we don't want to be doing is we don't want to be rushing in in wild speculation, particularly as we press a resistance level in a chart. Now, bulls are pushing here this morning. The pre-market, we were down overnight. Boy, the pre-market pump has got that all pushed up here onto a positive side looking for a recovery. So you want to be careful as we press into price resistance to watch for that potential of that pop and drop in the morning. I, I talked about that on Friday, that potential. We gap up into these resistance levels and then we could see those sellers come back in. Remember, there's quite a little bit of uncertainty about the things that come up later this week. We'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at our SPY now. Our SPY also breaking through those downtrends, holding through some resistance um, levels. Now we need that proof that we can hold that higher low, maybe follow that trend out. But I think earnings is going to mess up that smoothness of that trend. We'll either substantially move higher or substantially break down depending on how those reports come out. So watch that closely. And here again, our technicals in the chart holding up pretty darn well, holding above that 50 day moving average. But we do want to remember as we continue to push up, there still is substantial price resistance out here in the chart. And the question is, will the data this week support that um, that move to the upside or will it inspire those bears? And I think that's still kind of an unknown, although the talking heads certainly seem to be trying to inspire everyone to buy, buy, buy. But that always makes me really nervous when the talking heads are all pushing in one direction. It makes me think the institutions are looking for someone to sell to just in case we pull back. So watch that closely. Now, if we take a look at our QQQ, QQQ has been remarkably strong. Once again, 
even though our bond prices continue to be a problem for the market and they continue to point to recession, we continue to see this massive speculation in big tech. There is tremendous hope that these big tech reports um, will produce. But I want to point out, um, take a look at um, the kind of things that can happen if a um, big tech misses. So, uh, and this isn't obviously a giant tech by any means, um, but just notice how much they can be punished. So consider that carefully as you rush in and maybe try to buy up some of these big techs ahead of their earnings if they miss look for some punishment to occur. Now, as we continue to hold these price support levels and break these downtrends, we're in good shape. Technically in the chart, we've improved dramatically, but remember we still have, as we get through those big tech reports, remember Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon are all reporting this week. And if they happen to miss, just look for some punishment to come in here. Now I'm not suggesting that they will. I'm not trying to predict anything. I'm just trying to help you protect your capital. And to remember there is a lot of risk here this week um, in these charts. So just make sure you're planning very carefully and remembering one of our primary jobs is to protect our capital. If we take a look at our Russell, IWM is um, hanging in there pretty darn nice. We saw a little bit of selling in here um, on Friday like we did in all the markets, but as we're pressing into these resistance areas and running into this big week, once again, we want to pay attention. We've broken that downtrend, and I know there's tremendous hope that maybe this is the bottom, that everything is going to move to the upside. But remember, our big banks continue to suggest the bottom is lower still. And you'll want to be paying attention to that. If they are engineering this um, move to the upside, getting um, retail to speculate heavily, if they that's someone for them to sell to in case things start moving lower. So just kind of Think about that carefully as you plan your risk. Then let's take a look at our technicals here as well. Holding above that 50, and these are good signs. Remember, all of our indexes are trying to develop this round of bottom breakout, and we're trying to develop it right, um, right ahead of these massive reports that could move us dramatically. So kind of be careful here. Now, I know a lot of folks have been thinking, oh, this has to be over. The market can't go down anymore. But uh, I want to point out, if you go back and study other uh, bear market sell-offs, we do have significant rallies right before the capitulation event. We get that big rally that occurs and then there's that potential capitulation that takes us substantially lower in the market. And I want to continue to point out, now I'm not saying that you know the world's coming to an end or anything like that, but if you go to this um, website. Um, the current S&P 500 um, PE ratio, I want you to notice that it's at 46%. 46% above the historical average. Now what that means is we are still overvalued in the market on a PE ratio basis. So you'll want to keep in mind, is there the possibility that we could go lower? This would suggest, yes, there is that possibility. So don't throw caution to the wind thinking that there is no more downside in the market that we have to go up here because we certainly do not. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. In our economic calendar, we've got, um, whoops, I picked up another window in here. I apologize, I've got lots of th things open and going here. Um, we have a busy week this week, but luckily we start today out with a pretty boring day. Um, actually, we've got some three and six month bond auctions, a two year note auction that we'll want to be paying attention to because of those bond inversions that we're starting that we've been seeing pointing to recession but then tuesday we really begin the heavy hitters um, we're going to start off here with the beginning of the fomc me meeting we've got consumer confidence um, new home sales and remember our home sales are not looking so good right now so these are market movers prepare for that and then remember 
after the bell, we're going to kick things off with Microsoft here with those big tech giant reports after the bell. Then we're going to get these durable goods numbers. And I would, I would suggest that those durable goods numbers may not be all that spectacular. So we'll want to watch that closely. Um, on Wednesday, we've got international trade in goods, petroleum status, and then the big big daddy the big guns will come out here on uh wednesday with that fomc rate uh, announcement a lot of speculation in here that the fomc is going to back off mm, i would be careful with too much speculation on that um then uh, we're going to turn right around on thursday we're going to hit that gdp number find out if we're um, in recession or not um, a lot of the major banks have already said, yeah, we're already in recession. So kind of keep that in mind. That's a market mover. Um, jobless claims have been creeping up. So we'll want to keep an eye on that on Thursday. And then we've got personal incomes and outlays. And then my favorite indicator really is a consumer sentiment because we're a consumer based economy and our sentiment readings in this market are pretty darn bearish. So be careful here this week. We've got a lot of data with Microsoft, we've got Amazon, we've got Apple. Those big tech giants, when they report, they move the market substantially. So just be careful um, and plan your risk carefully around this week. Now let's take a look at our um, economic, um, earnings calendar uh, for today. Our e earnings calendar, um, we ramp up this week. We're going to really start to ramp up the number of earnings. As a matter of fact, I think by Thursday, we're going to get close to 200 earnings reports coming in on Thursday. So just kind of keep in mind as we we ramp it up. Yeah, I think it's right there 200 or over 200 on Thursday this week. So um, be kind of careful here. Now on our earnings calendar, um, remember guys that I cannot cover every single earnings report in these videos. Um, the videos would just be uh, ridiculously long over the next few weeks. So what I need you to do is I need you to click that link just below the title of the video that'll take you back to the morning blog and you can catch that full list of notables um, i think it's really important as we go through this earning session to make sure that you understand what's reporting what could move the market and you're prepared for those rather than just having the market do it to you um, make sure you're planning carefully a um, couple um, that i will cover this morning um, that we want to pay attention to uh, BOH. BOH will be reporting um, this morning. Keep an eye on that. We've got uh, stocks like DX reporting uh, some real estate trusts in there. We have uh, Wire reporting today, so watch out for those. We've got Newmont Mining, which could be pretty interesting. Gold and silver mining has just been hammered here lately as the US dollar it continues to show lots and lots of strength. So watch that carefully. Looks like new months heading lower this morning. Um, NXPI, NXPI trying to hold up here. Um, might want to be watching that one. Um, how about pets? Um, we're going to get a reading on whether our pet suppliers are doing really well. Pet meds. So keep an eye on that. Um, SCCO could be an interesting one to pay attention to. Uh, we've been watching copper also struggling here quite a bit and then last but not least um, we're going to have uh, whirlpool reporting here this morning some of those durable goods um, we'll want to be watching that closely this week let's take a look at um, some stocks that could be setting up for today but before we do that guys if you could do me that quick favor if this is the first time you've seen these videos if you could please click that subscribe button on youtube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time i post a video and if you find these videos to be useful or helpful if you could please do me that favor click that thumbs up button leave a brief comment and also um, make sure that you share these videos out there with other folks. Um, if you find them to be useful, other traders may find them to be useful as well. And I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who does support the channel. You know, uh, I know this is a very different channel than what you see out there in um, most of the economic world um, that just really wants to lean into this prediction like we know what's going to come next in the market. But I think we all know if we've been 
in the market for very long, we can have the best technical analysis in, in the world and these big market moving events can completely reverse a, um, that thinking um, really, really quickly. So remember guys, the purpose of these videos are not to provide any of that hyper prediction. It's to really look at the technicals of the chart, look at the things that will affect the market for the day and try to prepare you to be ready for those kind of events. You can, you can hedge yourself, you can protect your capital, which is one of the major responsibilities of a trader. So I, I want to say thank you to everyone who does does support this kind of content and I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these stocks that are setting up and remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. Make sure you're doing your own due diligence in these charts. Make sure you're thinking very very carefully about the risk of these trades and of course as we're heading through these earnings make sure you're paying attention to the company that you're looking at whether you're uh, making that decision to buy or sell make sure you're paying attention to that next earnings report. Now, after the Netflix report, and they we got a little bit of a boost there in Netflix, despite the fact that they lost subscribers, we saw streaming services pick up. So take a look at um, um, Roku. Roku has been trying to pick up here, and I don't know if it's going to be able to break through this resistance or not. We've got earnings here on the 28th. That could really make the decision here on Roku, but keep a close eye on that. Notice we're making little higher lows and we're pressing that resistance in the chart. So I'd watch carefully if you want to be long Roku, I would be watching for that opportunity that might pop through here. If you want to be short Roku, maybe start looking for it to break that little downside trend. Also seeing Disney, um, Disney made a big move here to the upside with some hope that some of these streaming services are coming back around. I don't know if I would buy into that idea all that much just simply because I think the consumers are still very stressed. Yes, gas prices are pulling back, but I don't know if you've been to the grocery store lately. Food prices are continuing to rise pretty dramatically. So um, those consumers, consumers are still stressed, and these are some of the places where consumers may, may make some of those hard choices, things that they have to cut out of their budget. But that being said, pretty substantial rally here in uh, Disney, and we're working our way up here to try and test some resistance here in the chart. Keep an eye on that though. Breaking above that 50 day moving average, we have that possibility of that rounded bottom breakout. So as we push up and we, if we can prove to hold in here, um, we may have some opportunity. And the good news on this one is that earnings are a ways off. So we might be able to get bullishness in the market um, through um, other earnings reports that continues to inspire this a little bit higher um, heading into earnings. So watch that close. Now, of course, we have lots of lots of stocks um, that have been coming up out of bottom, stocks that I've been talking about for some time now. Um, UPS continues to look very, very good here. My original alert was right in here. As you can see, moving through, we're following trend here in this chart. We've broken through some resistance here. I wouldn't rule out the possibility that this may still need to consolidate and rest a little bit. Uh, but we do have that earnings report coming up, which probably is going to mess this up completely. Either we'll gap up or gap substantially lower on that chart. So watch that carefully. See if that can hold in there um, on that chart. The stocks like um, Etsy have, and you guys know I've been talking about this one um, for some time now. Oops can't type this morning. Etsy has been doing very, very well, running right up this trend. Whoops. Sorry, my recording software decided on its own to change the um, drawing tool. But as you can see, moving up here in this um, nice upside move, breaking through some resistance levels, doing everything we want to see in a chart that's starting to turn around and move back to the upside. And here again, there's that rounded bottom breakout. This is the thing that I keep talking about over and over on the indexes. We break through the 50, we prove to hold it as support, and that is our upside move that we're looking for. Um, if you over speculate here, there's so many times that we can break that 50 day moving average and it just doesn't hold. It 
turns all the way back down. So remember, you want to see that hold. This is the proof that institutions are starting to maybe pick this thing up to the upside. Now, you all want to pay attention. Earnings reports here on the 27th. Um, things like uh, snow have been really moving um, pretty nicely. It, in this consolidation you know, broke through that 50 now we're trying to prove that we can hold this area in here in this chart remember our earnings out here aren't for about another month so you've got plenty of time for this um, to find that inspiration if the market finds that bullish inst inspiration to push on higher now i would be really really careful with uh, particularly if you're an option trader with stocks like apple apple have stretched we really stretched this to the upside and we're going to see in the implied volatility really spike up on these um, option trades. So it's possible that you could get the direction right on the trade, but not get enough of a move to overcome the implied volatility crush. So be really careful in here. And I wanna point out that Apple is pressing major resistance levels in the chart. We'll wanna watch that pretty closely and carefully. Some of these may actually end up being pretty good short trades. So think about that carefully. If this were to fail here, that sets up a pretty good opportunity for us to move back down following the bigger downside trend here in Apple. So watch that closely. It's really gonna depend on those earnings reports and we can shift sentiment in this market so quickly with an FOMC meeting coming around the corner, a GDP number likely to show recession. So just keep that in mind. So with that, everyone, hey, I wanna wish you all a fantastic day in your trading. I wanna wish you great results also want to echo out there again to just be a little bit careful don't over trade in a market like this you know if we just wait if we're a little bit patient in these trades we can usually pick up better positions we just wait for the better pattern to show up get past all of that gambling mentality in the market let the institutions make those take those risks they'll they'll make that decision whether we're going to start trending to the upside or not they have the majority of the money it's only them that can determine determine those trends, whether they're going to support the stock or not. So let's give them some time to do that. We'll get through these earnings reports and then there'll probably be some great opportunities in these stocks. So with that, have an awesome day and I'll see you right back here bright and early Tuesday morning. Wish you all the best. Everyone.